All right, so like I said, I ain't gonna take long on this. And this is pretty much just like straightforward stuff. If you have questions, it's unmute yourself and ask, but I shouldn't be too long on here uh, at all. Uh, it's pretty boring, honestly. All right, so we're talking, I guess, I should start with that. We're gonna talk with remote sensing. So you guys have already got an idea of that, like radar and stuff like that. So with remote sensing, first thing we're gonna talk about is Landsat satellites. And uh, this is the process of gathering data from Earth using just instruments uh, that's on like satellites, airplanes, ships, uh, just remote sensing in general. Okay, we can take that data and from it, we can pull that data and it gives us like a better three dimensional picture. And these can record uh, reflected wavelengths of visible light and infrared radiation from Earth's surface. And then computers can convert that into digital images, which is very important because that can give us scientists a lot of information whenever we're looking at things. And with this data, it can be used to study uh, pollution. So save the environment, save the polar bear kind of stuff. We can use it to say uh, study pollution. And then we have the movement of uh, the Earth's plates and the melting of glaciers, ice caps, stuff like that we can follow and look at. Okay. So OSTM or JSON-2 satellite, uh, one satellite uses radar to measure uh, map and see surface height is this certain satellite. Okay, so it uses high frequencies of signal. Sorry, everybody's blowing up my phone right now. It uses uh, high frequency signals transmitted from the satellite to the surface of the ocean and a, a receiving device then picks up the returning echo as it is reflected off the water and is how that's working pretty much with this what you're going to get is like to get these information signals we got to send something out and it has to come back to us so it's kind of like a wireless mic if anybody deals with audio stuff uh it, what happens is literally you have a transmitter and a receiver so kind of thing so going from the receiver we are receiving signal from the mic with that with this certain satellite they can use it and estimate uh, global sea levels then accuracy of just a few millimeters and that is an incredible incredible accuracy uh, believe it or not as extremely accurate for such a large scale incredible job with the scientists whoever came up with this and they use this data combined with other existing data to create maps of ocean floors and features so like you can get a look at what's going on down below the surface as well not just like the sea level but what's happening below it what's the terrain what's below that sea level then we have something we call sea beam and uh, that's just uh, sonar and it uses sound waves to detect and measure objects underwater and this uses uh, sonar to look at the ocean floor from a ship. So this is pretty important. If you are a captain of a ship, you would like to know what's below you. So if rocks keep getting close to you, you're like, whoa, we need to look where we at here. Um, something that's probably more common sonar wise is for fishermen that you like to go bass fishing. What you can do is you can actually take this stuff out and go fishing uh and like your detectors your fish finders and stuff they're going to use the sonar so then you got a sound wave uh it's sent from the ship this is how that sea beam works towards the ocean floor and then the receiver device picks up the returning echo and it bounces off the sea floor and we get the information we interpret it from that then we have a computer calculates the distance from the ship to the ocean floor using the speed of sound in water and the time it takes for the sound to be reflected. That's it, just doing the calculations, figure out how far it is away. Same thing as like uh, radar that police officers use. Like they literally, you run through it, they, it's just how radar works. Uh, sea beam technology used by fishing fleets, deep sea drilling opera operators, oceanographers, volcanists, um an archaeologist i cannot speak my wife gave me a small cup of coffee this morning 
I'll be getting a refill when I get home. So within this, we have the global positioning system. You all know what this is. It's GPS anymore. We just use them on these things. Uh, my father-in-law is a truck driver and he actually has a separate GPS for this. But all of us, we're gonna use the map app that comes with our Apple devices. Or if you are more like uh, me, you prefer Google Maps. And I will insert a funny story here. Uh, I was in Fort Wayne at Sweetwater and that is the largest uh, music store in North America. It's huge, wonderful place to go, great, great place. While we were there at a conference one time, we all felt like we could really go for some Krispy Kreme donuts. So we decided to get on and we'd use Google Maps and the whole way up there, well, the closest uh, Krispy Kreme was 44 miles away. So then we decided to use Apple's uh, map, Maps app, and see what they said. Well, they said there was one that was 2.6 miles away. So we went with what the Apple Maps had showed us, set it in and followed our location. And the whole time this thing takes us, we pull around to where they say this Krispy Kreme is, and it's like, you have arrived. And we pull up and we're like, this ain't Krispy Kreme. I'm pretty sure it was a drug house. And we pulled out there real fast. Good news was about a mile down the road, there was a steak and shake. So we still got something sweet and good to eat. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Anyway, back to the lesson. So these satellites, uh, they also rely on information, relay information, GPS receivers, about elevation, direction, movement, and speed. And this is important, like my father-in-law, where he's a trucker, this is why he likes his GPS separate, is the different amount of information that can log on that and how to communicate to him. It's very, very important to him that he gets all that information because he needs to know like elevation heights and stuff whenever he's carrying heavy loads so that he knows not to overheat his brakes on his truck. Then you got different uses for GPS technology. Uh, GPS technology is used in navigation of airplanes and ships. GPS navigation is also used for us because we like to get around to the right locations. And the fastest way to get there, um, like the second point saying there, help us get at our destination. Also help determine our current location, which is sometimes important. So visualizing GPS satellites. GPS receivers detect signals from the 24 GPS satellites orbiting Earth using signals from at least three satellites. The receiver can calculate location within 10 miles or 10 meters, sorry, 10 meters. This is really cool. I think it's always funny uh, if I share my location with people off my phone so they know where I am. It'll always pinpoint directly where I'm at. Like my wife can look and know that I'm in the teacher's lounge here at the school, but anytime I want to look at her location, you know, we'll have her in Pineville when she is in Oceana getting Pizza Hut or something. I'm like, wow, come on, man, get real. Make the walls. Join in the class. Boom. So then we have Geographic Information System, GIS. And this is just a worldwide database to create layers or themes of information that can be placed one on top of the other to create a comprehensive map. It can be very important to us. The GIS map layers with uh, remain linked to the original information. So the original information changes. The GIS layers also change. The result is a map that is always up to date, which is crucially, crucially important, especially with how our lives are continually changing. We need that information. And that is it.